What do you got there, Tom? It looks like a nice little bass. Nice. And I just hooked one right off of you. I got your that? follower there. You got my follower, huh? <laughs> you know, Tom, I see you got the fly rod out. I know that you do a lot of fly, but you do mostly fly out here? Yeah, probably 90% fly. Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We're here with Tom Patassi, Coastal Fishing Charters, Hogatuck River, Connecticut, Rhode Island border. What's going on over here? Andy, we're going to have some uh, striped bass and some bluefish today. Then we should have some surface action. These fish have been chasing the sand eels. Uh, it's uh, really shallow water, and Little Narragansett Bay will be in four to ten feet. Uh, we should see a lot of the bite. So maybe some top water, definitely some plastics. Throw the fly rod at them. Yeah, you know, Tom, it's one of my favorite types of fishing for bass. I know we'll gauge up with some light tackle here. Should be a lot, of, a lot of excitement. We should have some, some drags pulling out also. Absolutely, Rich. Absolutely. And this is that June bite that you talk about so much. June, springtime, bait starts coming in here. Let's let's move up. Let's get on these pieces. Let's just get started. Let's go. Let's go. Narragansett Bay, Tom Batasi got us started. There's one. And Rich is in. So Tom, you got the fly rod going here. Tell me, you know, I know we can, we've got the spinning tackle because that's basically more of my game, but uh, I know you do a lot of fly fishing up here. It's pretty productive. Actually it is, Richie, uh, Andy, excuse me. We, uh, we have a lot of good luck on a fly right now. In springtime we've got a little, little bait going on. The sand eels coming up and these flies imitating real well and these fish take it just real, real nice. You know, Tom, uh, you mentioned before there's a lot of eelgrass down here. Well, I got a little bass here, Andy. Uh, a lot of eelgrass. So I take it now with these bucktails. You really don't want to let them sink to the bottom no, too not, much, right? Not in here, Andy. Uh, Rich, I'm sorry. He's getting you guys confused already. We, uh, you know, a little shallow in here. We'll be sliding out to a little bit of deeper water here. But, yeah, you got to just kind of make that cast, and, and just as soon as that line settles, bring it right back. I got you, yeah. You know, it's nice having a, a big bucktail with a curly tail on it, because what it's doing is it gives it a little bit of buoyancy. It doesn't sink too fast. You know what, Andy, I'm looking at this fish, and take a look at this fish's tail. Uh, you can see all the bites that are on it. That gives me an indication that there's probably some bigger bluefish around here. <laughs> yeah. This what guy's you, been getting chewed on. Now, let me get it back in the water. See Pretty get fish, though. Yeah. Right, guys, we got some more birds up over here. Let's just we'll scoop, pump the boat up here, and we'll see if we can work that drift right down on top. Sounds good. So, Tommy, get yours in there. Let's uh, yeah, I'm in. Go. Up. Well, we just made a little shift here. Tom, where are we? Oh, there's a touch right there. Tommy, where are we right now? What area is this called here? We're, uh, we're right off of Watch Hill, Rhode Island. We're on the Watch Hill Reef System. It's an extensive system of reefs that runs pretty much from Watch Hill uh, down to the east of Fisher, or to the west of Fisher's Island. And, uh, oh, I'm in, guys. You're not going to believe this, but I got myself a big old pork chop. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I got something a little more substantial here. Hey, you know what? <laughs> but you know what? That's dinner right there. Richard just caught my dinner. Tommy, I, you know, I meant to ask you, are we going to run into anything else when we're down here or what? Uh, and I got a bluefish. Andy's got a bluefish, <laughs> I got a pork chop. And, uh, but I'll tell you right now, that's a healthy looking porgy right there. <laughs> Look at the size of that guy. Now this guy hit a bare bucktail, and now uh, you said I wanted to work close to the bottom. I, I, I told you I was. What do you, you think? You were. I think yeah. you were definitely down there. Hey, Rich, can we keep that one? <laughs> You're asking me if I can keep <laughs> No, we'll let this one go because I don't know how many more we're going to see, but that is a heck of a porgy right there. <laughs> Look at that. 
on a bucktail, no less. I tell uh, you, he outclasses this little bluefish. I bet you fought harder, too. <laughs> pound for pound, that's probably one of the better fighting fish you're going to see. Now, basically, what we're doing here is we're just flipping these jigs up into the tide a little bit. We're working them back, right, Tom, yeah, for the just most part? Get them down there, working them back, and uh, let these fish come up on them. I got you. And we're in about 30 feet of water right here? <coughs> yeah, we're sitting in 26 feet 26 right now. 26 feet, and yeah. actually, we're marking some stuff on the bottom right here, too, Andy. Well, let's just keep this drift going, and we'll see, see what we can pick up here. I'm getting hit here like mad. Yeah, you could, just, there you go. Fish on? No, not yet. Bluefish feels like, I'm in. There we go, another there one There we go. A little dance here, a little dance. You know, Tom, I noticed how many times you get hit on the fall with this, too. And you could really feel it with that braided line, too. Yeah, you know? no, I agree with you. All you right, know you know what, guys? I think that we got the trifecta here now. You think you got a bass on there? I think I might have a little bass here. I can't tell. I didn't see him. Bluefish. Ah, bluefish, bluefish. What? Uh, there you go, Andy. Oh, oh, look out. Snapshot? <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, that happens. You know what? Uh, we're using a fluorocarbon leader, about 30 pound test. You're going to break off a couple of fish. This is something you got to come out here with a pretty good supply of bucktails. That, that definitely makes sense. <laughs> you don't want to get into a bite and get caught short. Tom, did you have a pair of pliers on you there, buddy? I do here. Right here, bud. Thanks, man. Now, Tom, this fishery usually peaks, when would you say, for the most part? For the most part, you know, mid-June is, is definitely when things really happen around here. We get a good run of squid coming up on these reefs and stuff. But, you know, Rich, the, uh, the spring this year was definitely a little on the cold side. Was it now? We're, we're, we're probably a, a good week or two behind. All right. You know, right Andy and I were saying that early in the season also, down in the western Sound of Long Island. You know, we, we really, it seems like the last few years we go right from from winter right into summer almost. Right. Yeah. You know? A week so, and a half ago we had that uh, that big heat wave came through. We had 90 degree weather. Two days later we were out here and we had jackets and gloves on again. Yeah. No, it's that's amazing, but just, you know. But you know the other thing about that, even though the bite may start a little bit late, usually when it comes on, it really comes on like gangbusters. So sometimes I don't mind that as long as when it does come on, it's red hot. I hear you. Uh, we're hoping any tide now it's going to get that red hot. Well, we're going to go back right, up guys, and make this trip again, right? I'm going to rig up here again and let's move. Let's okay. go. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory, fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. Back here with Tom Patassi. Oh, I'm on. Uh, coastal fishing charters. What do you got there, Tom? It looks like a nice little bass. Nice. And I just hooked one right off of you. I How got your that? follower there. I got my follower, huh? <laughs> you know, Tom, I see you got the fly rod out. I know that you do a lot of fly fish. You do mostly fly out here? Yeah, probably 90% fly. And what, do you, what kind of line are you using here? Right now, I'm just on a uh, little bit of a uniform sink. And that, that line just lays down a little nicer and uh, a bad little fish. gives you a better retrieve. Yeah. You have a much better connection to the fish, yeah. And what weight is the outfit? This is a, uh, a nine weight. Okay. Uh, pretty oh, little fish on the fly right rod, though. Good this, fly rod. This lighthouse right here, what's the name of this one This here? is Watch Hill Light that we're Watch on Watch Hill right Light? Now. Yeah. Okay. Let this guy go. There you go. And Thanks, what buddy. Kind of, what, and for choices of flies? Choice of fly, pretty much uh, either like a chartreuse and white clouser or maybe a little more on the natural colors. So if they're on the sand deals, we'll go with like a brown and a white or a pink yeah. and a white. And, and, you ever, and never in. go completely away from that coloration, from the bait coloration? Uh, if I do go completely away, it's pretty much just chartreuse. Okay. You know, that's amazing. You're either trying to match the hatch or going completely opposite of it. Yep. A lot of times with, with the concentration of sand deals, there's just so many in there that if you show them something a little bit different, it tends to, you know, just uh, entice a strike out of it. Just them. stands out a little better in the Absolutely. school, I guess, right? Absolutely. Well, I see Rich has got his fly rod going there. And, you know, uh, you guys have seen me, you guys have all seen me fly cast, so I'll just stay with the spinning rod for now, okay? <laughs> Tom, you get some good fish doing this now, from what I hear also, right? Yeah, you can definitely, that's the one thing about up in here, Rich, you know, you can, that, that, Fish we just caught, what, 24, 25 inches? You right. know, your next fish can be a 30 pound fish. It's wow. just. On a fly rod, that's got to be amazing. It is. It's a lot of fun. You just got to take your time with them, and, you know, uh, it takes a little more time, but it's worth the wait. Yeah, you know, you know, people think about fly fishing, they think, you know, fresh water, kind of stuff like that, but yeah. 
I mean, you're hooking some good fish here on a fly rod, and you're saying, oh, "Here's another one." There you go, right there, too, right next to the boat. I mean, it's just a, it's just a real exciting way of fishing. And I'll tell you, with this gin clear water, it's even better. You can actually watch these fish come up and hit. Yeah, like a lot of times we saw like the take right there. Did to you? Yep. You can see the take on that. That's nice when you that happens. Fish following that, that I can just pick off. Ah, uh, sorry. This time he looks <laughs> to be a loner. So a little pretty smaller little this time, but pretty fish. You got such great color on them. And I'm noticing from that last fish also, you can see on the deck here, we actually got some sand eels. You know, one other thing, as we look off the beach here, you know, we've got a couple of fish breaking, we've fished them, we've pulled bluefish from them. Even though we're not seeing a lot of fish breaking here, we're on this rock pile and these bass seem to be oh, holding there we go. Yep. Rich is hooked All up. All right, Rich. Seems we found ourselves a little pot of fish. A little yeah. pot of fish there, Caught yeah. myself in the T-top here. Actually, this is, uh, eh, not too bad. Oh, no, that's a nice fish. You know, what's nice is eight feet down, you can still see these yeah, fish. Andy, I think I'm coming under you. No, there. you're coming the other way now. I have a great view of this fish. <laughs> Put a bass there? Yeah, yeah absolutely. There we go. Oh! oh quick gentleman's release. release. Quick release. But I know where they live now, Tom, so I'm getting in there. <laughs> Get right I back actually, on. I'll actually let that one sink a little more. Andy, how deep are we here out of curiosity? Uh, right now we're sitting in about 10 feet of water. 10 feet of water? Now, I gotta, I'll tell you it, one thing with the fly guys on the boat. Everybody's really got to pay attention to where the cat, where the back casts are. Yeah. Oh, basically just you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Two pretty, guys. I'm pretty safe up here. <laughs> I'm gonna just kind of hide behind just the don't, console. Don't go behind me, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Two guys fly casting is about the limit. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. But that fish, like I said, I got an intermediate line. You got a sinking line. That one I actually let sink a little bit before I, before I started retrieving, and yep. it, that seemed to work a little better. Let's try that again. You know, the second guys, we're gonna move up and slip up on this on this pile again. I think we're getting off this rocks a little bit. A couple more casts, and we'll move on up. That's probably a good idea, Andy. Sounds good. Let's bring it, let's bring him up, guys. Let's do it. I'm good to go, but. Tom, tell us a little bit about the retrieve and the strip. I like to do a little uh, one, two, three pause. Oh, there we go. Got one there, right? Yep. So a little yep. strip, strip, one, strip, two, pause. three, and a little pause. It just hops the fly enough to give it a little life, and uh, they seem to jump all over. A lot of times, right on the pause. You know, As right now, what I'm seeing is that I'm still working this little grub, and the flies are definitely out fishing it. Yeah. You know, and even though I am getting down in the water, water column, you got a nice one there, Rich? Yeah, not too bad. You know what I think it is also, Andy, when you said that, I mean, you're fishing a, a lure with a totally different profile to what these fish are feeding on right, right now. And we've seen these little two, three inch sand eels. I got a little green clouser on. Little you were saying clouser. the other color, we the other color tan that's you were right. using. Okay. Little chartreuse clouser. Somebody want to grab that? Yeah, I got them. Swing nice, them right here. Yeah, definitely a much closer match to the hash of what they're eating. Yeah, and you know, when you, you work that short little strip, you know, I'm basically just snapping down, right. snapping down, and you, you get so much more action with these. They can't resist it. It's, a, it's that natural instinct that the, the predator chasing the prey, that they think that prey is getting away, and they, they got to jump on it. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Like, you know, you'll see these fish, they'll shadow these schools uh, of sand eels, and it's like as soon as one or two stray away, that's when they move right in for, yeah. the, for the kill. Yeah, it's the one and, oddball one. Right, yeah. and that's kind of, I guess, exactly what these guys are looking at. Fish, oh, they're great looking fish. They're all, all the fish we've had today are beautiful. Yeah, great now, I know that you want to take us to a couple other spots. I, I know we're probably even putting the fly rods away, but this is a good time, and I feel like I got a bit of an education. That's good. <laughs> Rich, you all set to roll? Good enough. you have got to take one more cast. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> and I'll get mine wound up in the meantime. Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full-length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of Northeast Angling. Well, Tom, we moved up on this other school of birds. 
man. You know, I'm getting tapped. Oh, there he is. You ready, right, Richard? Son. Oh, yes. Yeah. Straight up and down, Tom, right under the boat. Tom, where are we now? What, uh, you said we're moving up to a, a yeah, new we, point we here? We moved up the beach a little bit. We're, uh, we're off a of Weekapog Point here. And, uh, Weekapog. Weekapog. Okay. Guys, Pog. nice little bass here. Hey, yeah, nice go. little bass. I don't know if I got a bass or a bluefish on it. It feels like a bass. Little bass. Now we're, uh, I went with a sinking line now on this one because we're fishing. What we're in 16, uh, 13 feet 13 now. 13 feet in of water, a little bit. sliding up, and I'm marking a ton of bait on the bottom here. Yeah, Tom, getting tapped are, down there. What are people's options for getting up here? You know, what are, the, what are their choice if they want to go and do this bite? Um, you know, shoreline access is pretty limited, as you can see. The coastline's all littered up there with private homes and stuff. So pretty much, uh, you know, boat ramps. Uh, there's some state ramps in Rhode Island. There's a couple, uh, you know, uh, state ramps in Connecticut that you can access, or uh, certainly, uh, you know, all right, give, the guides. A give a local charter captain a yeah. call up. Absolutely. There you go. You know, I know that you guys. Uh, what? How early does your charter season start, and when does it end? June is pretty much the uh, the start time around here. You know, it's all really going to be weather dependent, but uh, June is a real good bet. We got these fish moving in. Uh, the temperature warms up, and oh, there was a miss. Oh, look at those birds yeah. working out over there, guys. Uh, we got to get out there. Let's uh, bring them in, and let's move on to that school. That looks really good. I'm in already. Come on. That was a good tap right there. Yeah. Go by? Just, yeah. just bounce us right up onto good, that, Tom. Good, good wrap. Well, we're back here with Tom Patassi. Where oh. are we now, Tom? Right to watch your light? There we right go. Right outside of watch your light. And it looks like Rich has stayed with the fly rod. Get a decent one on there, Rich. Actually, this one doesn't feel too bad, Andy. He went Good. right. He went right down deep. Oh, there he goes. Right down deep, pretty quick. He went. Now, Tom, we, we, what stage of the tide have we gotten to at this point? Uh, we're almost at the bottom of the tide here. And you told us basically we're gonna fish this right about the bottom of the tide. Probably start packing it up and, and head on in. Now, you don't catch a lot of fish at the bottom. Is that what happens, or? It tends to slack off just a well, little bit. This one's not that bad, that. guys. Looks like a nicer fish. Yeah, yeah. not too bad. Yeah, that's a good fish. There he goes. There he goes. You know, on a fly rod, that's that's a fine fish. Absolutely. Any fish on a fly rod is a fine fish. Well, you know, Tom, this this whole day was you called it. You said you're gonna we're gonna get some action. We have to run around a little bit. And we did. We covered a few different spots. It's gonna bump us past this little lobster pot right here. There he comes. There he comes. There we go. We can get that one for you. Oh, that's nice. Got him there, Rich. Yeah, coming up now, Andy. You want to work him back this way a little bit? Yeah, Tommy, you want to look this one for me? Yeah, absolutely. Love to. Hello, big guy. Oh, that's nice. Oh, he ate that, didn't he? Absolutely. He wanted that. Oh, 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 oh. He got the whole thing. That's one of the ones you say you're not going to lose, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it gives you an idea of how aggressive these fish are. You want a little needle nose or something for that? Uh, I'm almost done. You got it. Well, this now, has been a, is... I'll tell you what, it's been a heck of a morning. Watch kill you know, light. I, I just can't get them over the amount of life in this area. Pretty it's, fish, it's, huh? Look at the colors in that guy. Between the piles of sand deals and the fish busting everywhere, this has been spectacular. Yeah, I pretty, can't what a pretty place. I'm um, glad to have you guys and uh, hope to have you back again soon. Well, you know what? Maybe we have time for like one more trip. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll put you know this guy what? back. <laughs> in that. If you weren't going to say it, I was. <laughs> I'm going to just take us and yeah, spin us right back around there. and get us on that trip. You got it. Thank you for watching Northeast Angling. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations as seen on this show at neangling.com. See you on the water.